Today we're going to be looking at Boogaboo's entire current lineup, as well as a couple of discontinued models that we feel are worth purchasing used. If you've browsed our channel a bit, you might have noticed that we sometimes give Boogaboo a lot of flack, and I'd like it to be understood then, right from the outset, that we're actually big fans of the company, and even if we don't always like every model, no single manufacturer, in my opinion, has done more to push the bar in terms of intuitive functionality and comfort innovations as Boogaboo has, and as a result, I doubt if any other manufacturer has been plagiarized as much as they have either. In this video then, we're going to look at eight models, weighing the advantages and disadvantages of each in terms of how their comfort characteristics and mechanics perform with regards to different lifestyles and environments, in order to help those of you dead set on buying a model from this ever innovative manufacturer to find the one that's right for you. And please note then, that as a result of this focus, we will only be judging these strollers in relation to each other today, not the wider market. So if you're interested in purchasing one of them, we do recommend that you watch our in-depth standalone reviews for the prospective models, as they contain a lot more information, including criticisms in many cases, that won't be covered today. And starting off small then, our first stroller is the Ant, which clocks in at just over 7 kilos and folds down to 55 by 38 by 23 centimeters, which is within the cabin luggage limit set by the IATA. The Ant is Boogaboo's ultra-compact model, meant primarily as either a travel stroller or for jet-set lifestyles in very urban conditions, with its major selling point in relation to other ultra-compacts being the ability to reverse the seat to a parent-facing position. This design choice, unfortunately, means that the Ant seat is both a bit on the small side, best suiting children younger than two, and also makes for a somewhat complex fold. Which is why, I feel that the ultra-compact format is too small to take a reversible seat in general, regardless of how well a model is built otherwise. Boogaboo released a pair of useful accessories for the Ant last year, in the form of a carry strap and an attachable leg rest, that I would suggest thinking of as necessary purchases, especially the leg rest. And if you're in the market for a travel model then, and determined to go Boogaboo, then the Ant would be the model to choose from all the strollers in this video. Moving up a notch, size and weight-wise, our next model is the B6, the latest iteration of one of Boogaboo's more long-lasting model lines, which weighs in at 9.5 kilos and folds down to 90 by 47 by 36 centimeters. Originally launched as a luxury travel type model in the days before ultra compacts, on the current market, the B fulfills more of an everyday main stroller role for urban lifestyles where space is at a premium. The B6 is sturdier than the Ant. Its seat is a tad larger, though still not large enough to comfortably sit seat a child to the end of their stroller years, and its bigger wheels and better suspension also give it a bit more terrain capability for negotiating rougher city streets. Its chassis is also a little more complex than the Ant though, built to fold in an open skeletal style with more hinges and moving components than any other Boogaboo stroller besides the Donkey, and in my opinion here, as its design seems a product of the market at the time of the B's initial launch, this stroller seems due for a larger update than Boogaboo has given it so far. As far as why one might choose the B6 over the rest of Boogaboo's lineup is concerned, the B6 is for parents looking for a daily use model and who also live in smooth urban or suburban conditions with particular need for a compact folding stroller. Next up, and moving into the midsize models, we get to the current iteration of Boogaboo's actually longest running model line, the Chameleon 3 Plus, which weighs in at 9.6 kilos and folds down to 90 by 50 by 31 centimeters. The Chameleon 3 Plus was discontinued in the US in 2019, but is still widely sold in the rest of the world, persisting primarily in my opinion as a result of its incredible recognizability. And the model is another step up size-wise from the B6, though its similarly sized front wheels mean that it can't really handle that much rougher terrain. Its seat is larger, however, big enough to take kids in maximum comfort up to 3, 3.5, three and, and it's also a good deal simpler to fold than either the Ant or the B6. In comparison to the rest of Boogaboo's line, the only real reason for choosing the Chameleon 3 Plus would have been that it's the model closest in appearance and function to those earliest Boogaboo models that revolutionized the market in the first place, which provides a certain iconic appeal. Unfortunately, however, the Chameleon has a pretty serious design defect in its central locking mechanism, and for that reason, it's the only model today that I would outright advise you not to purchase. And instead, if that iconic look is what you're mainly interested in, then you should consider Boogaboo's newest model, the Lynx, which clocks in at 9.5 kilos and folds down to 60 by 60 by 88 centimeters. Despite Boogaboo's seeming denial of the fact, to me, the Lynx feels very much like a successor model to the Chameleon line, with similar dimensions, weight, folded size, activation mechanisms, and driving capabilities, while really bringing in only a handful of innovations from its big brother, the Fox. It also maintains Chameleon's somewhat fiddly two-handed seat tilt mechanism and lack of rear suspension, though it is worth noting that the increased size of its front wheels does improve the model's terrain capability a little, in comparison to both the Chameleon and the B. 
Still though, like the Chameleon, the Lynx is predominantly a style purchase, not a performance purchase, with its only real use value over the Fox being that it both costs and weighs a tiny bit less, making it thus potentially relevant only for people who are absolutely sure that they won't be needing the Fox's increased capabilities. Right. Moving finally into Boogaboo's larger models, which are a bit stronger in comparison to the wider market in my opinion, we get to the Fox 2, which weighs in at 12.2 kilos when fully assembled and folds down to 47 by 60 by 90 centimeters. The Fox 2 is arguably Boogaboo's main model at the current moment, a little larger and heavier than either the Chameleon or the Lynx, but also both significantly more terrain capable due to even larger front wheels and much better suspension, and replete with a wider plethora of easy use minded functions, including a mechanism allowing the model to be unfolded from its self standing fold without bending over, a more intuitive seat tilting mechanism, and a ballpoint brake system. Internally, the Fox 2 is also a lot more complex than any of the models we've covered so far, which can sometimes lead to problems if you don't treat it right, though in my opinion, the model's performance advantages outweigh this weakness. And thus, in comparison to all the models that Boogaboo currently offers, this is the one that I would most recommend if you're looking for an everyday use stroller for a single child. And last up then for Boogaboo's currently available models is the Donkey 3, which weighs 15 kilos when configured with a pair of seats and which can be folded down to 91 by 60 by 24 centimeters in its most compact form. The Donkey 3 is Boogaboo's two-child model and is, in my opinion, not just a great model among Boogaboo's lineup, but is also often my top pick from the wider market for anybody facing a longer period with two stroller-aged children, due both to its easy versatility in swapping out bassinets, seats, and car seats, and more importantly, the simple fact that it's a side-by-side -side model with reversible seats, the best setup for providing equal access to two children at the same time, and yet is still sufficiently lightweight and foldable that it can be packed in and out of a car while also being easily maneuverable and very terrain capable. The trade-off for its abilities is that the Donkey 3 is a bit more prone to loosening and structural wear over time than most other Boogaboo models. But again, as with the Fox 2, this can both be mitigated to some extent through more careful use and is also a worthy price for the comfort and performance advantages the Donkey brings to the table. As far as whether the Donkey 3 is right for you, note that despite the fact that it has a mono mode, the model's value really lies in that two-child configuration, due to the fact that prolonged use of the stroller in its one-child configuration can cause asymmetry issues, and also because of the model's seat width, which makes it subpar as purely a one-child stroller in the long run. So those were the models presently available from Boogaboo, but don't go yet, because there are two additional models that have been discontinued but are still highly worth considering looking for on the used market, the first of which being my favorite model of all time from the manufacturer, the Buffalo. Launched at the same time as the Donkey, the Buffalo is a large-sized luxury terrain stroller constructed with a predominance of parts identical with the Donkey, essentially making the model built with the durability needed for two children, even though it only seats one. And like the Donkey then, the Buffalo's 10-inch front wheels make it highly terrain capable, while its seat and bassinet are also a little larger than one gets with any other Boogaboo model. And additionally, the Buffalo is really the only model from Boogaboo in my opinion where they actually prioritize structural strength at the expense of size and weight, undoubtedly violating some secret rule of their design canon. But given all the other comfort and functionality perks that getting a Boogaboo brings anyway, this is a mistake that I sure love to see them make again in the future. And in terms of getting a daily use stroller for one child then, if you can handle the somewhat larger size of the Buffalo, there really is no reason not to go for the model over all other Boogaboo models, past and present, if you can find one in decent condition that is. Okay, last up then is the Runner, another discontinued model which is not a full stroller in its own right, but rather a rough off-road capable jogging chassis that's compatible with the seat units from the majority of their other daily use models including the B. Like the Buffalo, I fear they may have felt the runner didn't fit with their often daintier aesthetic, and they canned it within the last couple of years. Though note that it hasn't been gone for that long, so if you want a complimentary addition to another Boogaboo model for sporting or off-road use, you can probably still find it available from various distributors around the world, if you're willing to hunt around a little. Or you can, of course, look for a decently well-maintained model on the used market. The runner isn't for every lifestyle, of course, but if you live somewhere with a bit more nature and maybe a bit of snow in the wintertime, it will give you one heck of a premium stroller experience in combination with another Boogaboo model. In any case, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about any of these models, we have standalone reviews for all of them, other than the runner, that go into a lot more depth, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find that by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.